When Venetians wake each day, the first thing they hear before the tourists arrive is the sound of church bells. Venice has more than 60 bell towers, most of them ancient and most of them leaning. Some appear perilously close to tumbling. Like many of the distressed buildings in Venice, authorities prop them up however they can. But the most dominant of all towers in Venice is this one, St Mark's Bell Tower in the piazza that borrows its name. As the tower approaches its 100th anniversary, the chief conservation architect for St Mark's Square, Ettore Vio, worries it too now is in danger of lurching. The same campaign of St Marco, which has been reconstructed, that is, today we are in the 7th, so it has 95 years. Eh, lo stesso campanile ha una pendenza di circa 7 cm, eh, mentre quello che è caduto pendeva intorno ai 30 cm verso l'angolo di nord-est. This relatively new construction of 1.2 million bricks is a replica of the 1,000-year-old bell tower of the same name, in the same spot that collapsed in 1902. And therein lies the problem. It was rebuilt with the same faults. Gli antichi addirittura non facevano, non chiudevano il fondo del campanile delle torri. Facevano il muro tutto attorno e la torre scendendo scendeva al centro e quindi appoggiava per poco. Cracks are starting to appear at its base. There's no immediate danger of collapse, but its foundations are surrounded by water, which is hastening damage to St. Mark's Tower. Fearing the worst, Venetian authorities called in the best. Structural engineer Professor Giorgio Macchi has built a solid reputation, saving some of Italy's finest structures from downfall. Your favourite? Il favorite? Qual è il tuo pre preferito? Mm, Pisa, Pisa, Pisa. Pisa. He led the engineering team that rescued the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now he has a plan to halt the decline of St. Mark's Tower. So if there was no intervention, could the tower lean or eventually collapse? Oh, could lean, could lean, certainly. Titanium rods, six centimetres thick, will be wrapped twice around the foundation stones of St. Mark's Tower, acting as a kind of belt preventing any movement. Like all of Venice, the foundations are underwater and the area will have to be drained for the work to be carried out. Maria Giovanna Piva has an onerous job. She's in charge of efforts aimed at stopping the perpetual flooding of Venice. Diciamo che dobbiamo inquadrarlo il lavoro del campanile, cioè il lavoro del campanile rientra nel progetto generale di salvaguardia proprio della piazza San Marco e della riva degli schiavoni. Però eh, ecco, non è altro che un tassello nel mosaico grande del piano degli interventi. Last year St. Mark's Square flooded 200 times. It doesn't have to rain, the high tide just spills over the city's footpaths. The flooding also causes the soil to subside, hence so many leaning towers. Moses, according to some, is the great saviour of Venice. It's the name given to the controversial $6 billion project aimed at controlling the tidal flows into Venice. The city's 60,000 residents will have to wait until 2012 to see if it works. In the meantime, they lament other problems flooding into Venice, such as the increasing pressure from tourists. 
13,000 pour in each day. In the scheme of Venetian restoration work through the ages, the St Mark's Bell Tower project will be a relatively quick job. It will take just two years and around $16 million. Perché quello che conta è che intanto sta in piedi, cioè tu ti senti in un certo senso coinvolto anche con tutte le tue forze e con il tuo pensiero e anche con il tuo cuore però, a tenere in piedi un patrimonio che hai avuto in eredità. Allora, per me è stato un onore grandissimo avere questo incarico. Povera Venezia, poor Venice, are the words often cried by residents and protectors of this jewel of the Adriatic. But they're quick to admit that all it takes to lift their pessimism is a glance and appreciation of the city's treasures.